Well, um, this is overwhelming, y'all. It really is. I um. It's it's been a uh, it's been a uh, an astounding weekend for me to be honest, and um, actually astounding week. First of all, I want to say thank you everybody who came here today and who was here last Sunday on a holiday. Thank you for believing in what God is doing here at Tabernacle of David. Um, thank you for trusting me in the ways that you trust me you. to be yeah. the one that yeah. delivers the word. I, um, I, uh, go ahead and sit down. Um, I, I, um, 60 feels good, y'all. I, uh, you know, um, and, and, And thank you to my wife. She's trying to make 60 look good on me. So I, I uh, she, she's my, uh, she's my fashion designer, whatever, whatever that means for me. Um, so it's just so Friday, uh, Friday, which was my birthday, my, my family just blew me completely out of the water. Um, my wife had been planning something for some months and it, it, just with everything going on, um, I, I told her, she, you know, it's just it's too much right now. And so, walked me in this building Friday night, and I was, uh, I, I knew she had to come and do something, and I needed to do something. But we came down here to the sanctuary, and my family, meaning all my children, my grandchildren from out of town and everywhere were here, and they had this arc of chairs lined up facing the stage. And I walked in the room, and there was my brother Gino and my son-in-law, Roy um, and uh, my son-in-law Shante on the instruments, and Danielle was up there singing on the stage, and they began to sing songs. They they took the time. I don't even know when they did this, but they began to play songs that I've written over the years. That I, <laughs> it took me out, y'all. <laughs> I literally collapsed right here just from the display of love that, that, they, that they poured out on me. It was just absolutely the best birthday ever. Um, and then for you all this morning to, to show your love. I don't take anything for granted. Um, it's never for nothing with me. It matters. Every, as a matter of fact, for the last few days, I've been hearing this crunching sound on my phone. That's Cash App. People just, been, just for the last few days, people have been crunching my pocket, <laughs> you know, and I just, um, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Just, um, let me get this thing open. So just to, I know my password. Yeah, yeah I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew you could not, somebody couldn't resist the temptation. So I want to say this. Um, um, my mother-in-law, Wanda Lyons is over here somewhere. My sister-in-law, Shari Brown, my brother-in-law, Mark Brown, and my niece, uh, 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 Skyler. Please stand up. And Charlie is back there, too. Thank you all for coming today. I love you. So let's dive in, y'all. This is the opening series of 2023 and our journey of discovery. Um, put that prayer up there. I want to pray together. <laughs> Center your hearts today because we're, we're, we're definitely going on a journey of discovery. And I want you to lean in close because we've got some things to share that take a lean in. But let's pray this together. Say, Father, Father as, I humbly approach your word, as I humbly approach your word, I ask you, I ask you 
No, 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 no. <laughs> to answer my hunger. That's right. Answer my hunger. With, your truth. With your truth. Teach me, O oh Lord. Show me your great things, unsearchable things, inconceivable things, inaccessible things that I do not know and cannot learn except by your spirit. Help me change into what I discover in your word. I thank you now for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, what we're asking you for today is, uh, is a miracle. Every time you reveal yourself to us, it is a miracle. Every time you show us another part of you, it is you introducing an infinite reality into a finite world. We want to know you, God. We want to know you in a special and a particular way today. So free our minds, free our hearts. Holy Spirit, let us lay aside everything and pay full attention to you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready? Amen. Lean in. So the, the title of this first series, as we mentioned last week, is God is everybody just say that God, God is. is and that's got a dot 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 after it. whatever you call that thing it's gonna start with a P I don't know what it is and today's message in particular is God is spirit and we'll we'll delve into that in just a little bit today I if, if I do what I'm here to do if I do what I've been assigned to do you will be in greater awe of God. I want to introduce him to you in ways that perhaps you've not met him. Um, I want him to expose us to new eternal realities that can only be grasped by the eternal life that's inside of us. If God does reveal himself to you, in a way that elicits or, or, or evokes some kind of response to him, feel free today to respond how he hits you. However that is. Because this is truly an awesome God that we serve. So, the first step in our journey is God is. Why do we start there with God is? And we leave space for discovery after that, that two-word phrase. We start with God is because that's where everything starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first four words in the Bible is, in the beginning, God. Stop right there. That is a signal. It's what's called the first mention uh, in, in, in um, hermeneutics. The way something is first mentioned in Scripture is a portal for how you look at that thing from now on. So when the scripture says, in the beginning, God, that shows where he belongs at all times. Yes, yes, yes. God is to be our absolute priority. Yes. And if we do what the scripture says and begin with God, everything that plays out after that is going to be all right. That's right. That's right. Amen. If you start with putting him first, and your introductory movement into anything is to consult God, is to worship God, is to turn to God, is to worship, is, is, is to ask God. Then everything after that has to be, listen, you don't have to, you don't even have to get the next 10 steps perfect. If you start with God, it's going to end up where it should be. God let, never limits our experience with him to our weaknesses. The only limit, which is limitless, is his power. So start with God. So, I believe we have some grasp of who God is. Throughout the scripture, he, he identifies himself uh, by name, and all those names talk about who he is. Yahweh, which is the self-existent one. 
I'm Jehovah Nisi. He's, 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 he's my banner over me. I'm Jehovah Shema. He, all the, he's present. Jehovah Jireh. All these things, Adonai, uh, El Elyon, all these different words that tell us who he is. But I think it to be important today that we discover what God is. Let me give you an example. This is my son Antonio. That's who he is. What he is, is a man. Who he is, is Antonio. What he is, is a brother. Who he is, is Antonio. What he is, is an uncle. And we could go on and on and on. Each of those identities call on a different part of him. He remains who he is, but what he is, depending on what he's relating to, changes what comes out of him to affect that person, that relationship. We know who God is. We call on his name all the time. They were singing it up there today. Jesus and God, you've been so good. And I've, all of those spaces. But what is he to you? And what can you expect out of his vastness, infinite power? Because if you get a hold to the what, you know how to call on him in every moment and draw on his strength. Now, this is a bodacious endeavor, y'all. And I'm kind of scared. Because the closer you get to God, the more awesome you see he is and the more you have the fear of the Lord. This is a bodacious endeavor. And the only thing that authorizes me to even have this conversation is Romans 1, 20. Hit it, DJ. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and godhood, so that they, we'll get to who they is some other time, so that they are without excuse. So the Bible says the invisible things of God, the hidden things of God, his divine nature, eternal power, and Godhead are clearly seen if you look at the things that he's made. Hallelujah. Creation is God's declaration of himself. So we got to turn over some rocks to find out what's up under there so we can find out what God is today. So the Bible makes three existential statements, and for the next few months, we're going to be unfolding this. And I told you that we're going to fast and, and seek God after this because I want to fast a more powerful God than the one I know right now. So, three existential statements that the Scripture makes about God. And by existential, I mean his existence, his substance, his reality. The first one is, this is the one we're going to be on today, God is spirit. You don't have to turn here, we're going to turn later, but it's, it's uh, St. John 4, it uh, says in the 24th verse. The second one, so say God is spirit. God is spirit. Emphasize the word is, say God is spirit. God, God is, is spirit. That's what I mean by, it. this is existential, it deals with not something that he does, but something that he is. The second one is God is light, say it. First John 1 John 1.5. And then the third one is God is love. God is love. First John 4, 8. Now the thing about God that's difficult to grasp sometimes is his, 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 his co-unity, that, that ability to be the three in one. You know, he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all diverse personalities, but yet inseparable in nature. That, too, is an infinite reality trying to be imposed upon a finite mind. And some, we, we're still grappling. I've heard people try to uh, explain the Trinity, and people much smarter than me, and some of the attempts are kind of clumsy. But we're still working on that because it's just we don't get that. Not yet. So, but God is all of these things always. God is 
all spirit, he's all light, and he's all love. We'll talk about that. So these things are not attributive. They're, they're, they're not attributes. They're existence. It's, it's not um, God can do this. or uh, It's not that. As a matter of fact, there's some statements in the scripture that show what might look like an existential statement, but when you look at it, it says God is a present help. That's different than God is. The Lord is my rock. That's different than God is. As a matter of fact, those things flow out of something that he is. So these three things are the catalyst for what God does and why. So let's talk about that for a minute. We're like God in this respect. We have these bodies, and these bodies are made of different stuff. I, I don't know much about biology. Some of y'all asked your mother what that song was about. <laughs> we have these bodies, which we're very, very, very conscious of because it's where we have the most interaction with life. Yes, sir. But we are not just bodies. Give me uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. We're not just bodies. We are bodies, but the Bible says we are also souls. And the Bible says also we are spirits. Give it to me, Lane. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you. What's this next word? Complete. So the entire you, which consists of what's next, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved at the coming of the Lord. So you are spirit, soul, and body. Those different parts of you demand different things and serve different functions. Your body, it, it explains what you do. You get hungry and we what, eat. Why? Because your body needs to eat. Um, you, you shiver when it's cold. Why? Because your body's trying to generate the heat that you're not providing for it right now by moving real fast like that. Since you won't put the right kind of coat on, I'm going to sit here and shake and try to come up with my own heat. <laughs> That's because you, are, you, you, you have a body. Your soul is responsible for the emoting part of you. As a matter of fact, if you look at the scripture, you find the soul doing one of three things or, or, or more of three things. Uh, uh, being, it's the mind, the will, and the emotions. The, your soul is the part of you that dictates what you're thinking about, what you're imagining. It dictates um, what you yearn for and desire. It dictates how you emote over certain things. Some people, when they get upset, uh, go and somewhere and separate themselves because they know better than to not do that. Other people come straight out and roar like a lion and, and you got to move out of their way. Th your soul is responsible for the emoting part of you. Your spirit is responsible for the part of you that tries to accelerate you past all of those things and reach for something and somebody that is higher than you are. All of humanity, no matter what their condition, the spiritual part of them is constantly reaching to, fi to find and to serve and to follow something that's higher than them. Everybody does that. These things constitute our choices, our behaviors, our body, spirit, soul. All. We're like God in this regard. God is spirit. What does that mean? <laughs> God is love. God is light. So let's get into this. We're getting into God is spirit right now. We're we, we getting down to the conversation. Say God is spirit. God is spirit. Give me St. John 4, 22. Thank you for that. Take your time, too. So I'll read this, and I'll give you the backdrop. You worship what you do not know. This is Jesus talking to the woman at the well. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Now, here's the backdrop of this story. Jesus' disciples, they, they're, they're, they're in Judea, um, and they're heading to Jerusalem, and they have to pass through Samaria. His disciples, Jesus said, go get something to eat, but I need to continue straight through here. He comes to this well, and there's a woman there at the well 
Jesus is a Jew. The woman is a Samaritan. They don't mix and mingle at all. He asked her to give him a drink, something that's way out of order. She says, how do you, being a Jew, ask me to give you a drink? And they go through this whole interaction. Comes down to the point where Jesus said, will you go call your husband for me? She said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, you have just, you're an accurate statement. You have had five husbands, and the man you're with now is not your husband. <clears throat> she goes into this conversation after that when she sees that he's a man of God and says, talk to me about this, this worship thing. And out of that, Jesus reveals this truth that has not been revealed yet in the scripture. This is the first place where God has been identified as spirit. Why did he do it there, y'all? Why didn't Isaiah say that? Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Why didn't he reveal it in the temple when the people couldn't even get in there to worship because his spirit was so awesome? This situation was prime for Jesus to introduce his father like this. And there was a demand on it because this woman's life was in a place where clearly she's searching for something. She's going from one relationship after another searching for something. She doesn't know what, but she's still searching. She is not a prime candidate to receive a revelation from God like this from the outside because her life was in shambles. But you don't have to be perfect to get the intention of God. You just got to be hungry. All you got to be, as a matter of fact, the time that we find God often is the time when our life is the most lost. <laughs> and God wants to take you from the lost to the found. <laughs> I'm lost and found, y'all. I'm going to be straight with you. So this woman was on a journey of discovery. She was taking the wrong path. She was doing the wrong things. She was connecting with the wrong people, perhaps even for the wrong reasons. But God intersected her journey of discovery and said, this way, baby girl, I, I, I got something. I got the real thing for you. Jesus said to her, if I give you what I got, you ain't going to need nothing else. <laughs> So God chose that moment of a thirsting, hungry, longing, pitiful, but hungry person and said, this is the place I want to tell you about my father. God is spirit. God is not a spirit. Say it for me. God is spirit. God is not spiritual. Say it with me. God is spirit. What does that mean? That phrase is still kind of abstract. I've been hanging out there for however long now, but let's, let's get to it here. This is this limited vessel's best way of getting this across. God is eternity personified. That doesn't mean that God is full of eternity. That means eternity is full of God. The only reason that eternity exists is because God exists. Eternity gets its vibrance from the living God. Eternity gets its longevity from the living God. The only reason that there is something that's called eternal is because you have a God that is indomitable. He cannot be conquered. He cannot be matched. 
and eternity emanates from him. Do you remember what the revelation said about Jesus? It said in that day in the New Jerusalem when, when we all out of this world into our next world, it says there will be no need for the sun there because the sun is the light of it. Jesus is what will power New Jerusalem. God is what powers eternity. Mm. God is unlimited. You can never come to the end of him. Can never come to the end of his power. Never come to the end of his mercy. Never come to the end of his goodness. Never come to the end of his second chances. God is unlimited. God is indomitable. He cannot be conquered. As a matter of fact, what we call everlasting life or the fact that eternal life lasts forever, that's an effect and not a cause. Meaning, the reason eternal life lasts forever is because it comes from a God that's so powerful that him or his eternal life can't be conquered. Consequently, it lasts forever. You can't kill eternal life because it's too powerful. And so it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. Then the devil tries his game and it keeps going and it keeps going and going. Man tries his game and it keeps going. Nobody can conquer the author and the source of eternal life so you live forever. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's a misnomer to say that the devil and God are opposites. Because in order to have an opposite, there has to be a corresponding is the opposite of cold because they're both temperatures. Left is the opposite of right because they're both directions. The devil is not the opposite of God because he is not a God. He was made by God. So God has no equal and no opposite. He is God and God alone. He is uncaused. God is unoriginated. He's uncaused. He's inexplainable, y'all. He just is. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. There is no reason for God. <laughs> no explainable reason. I remember sitting as a kid, my family were talking about last, everlasting life. I sit up trying to fathom what, it, what forever feels like. I feel like I'm about to lose my mind, leave my mind. So, ah, ah, ah. You got to think about something else. Just believe it. You'll understand it later. Just believe it now. <laughs> As a matter of fact, believing is how you get to the understanding. The Bible says in Hebrews, it says, through faith, we understand that the world's refrain. Faith came first. The understanding comes second because you get close enough to him for him to inject that life into you. So let's go here. Say God is spirit. Help me out, Josh. Let's go back to Romans 120 for a second here. Give me that back. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal and power and godhood. Uh, bring it all to me. I need some help. Give me a... Uh, my man, Edmund Hook. Josh, if you will, please take one of these. Don't even take one of these. <clears throat> I'm, bring it up here, up front here. I'm going to tell you what to do with it. You hold that out um, directly in front of you right there. Um, I'm going to have y'all come back in a minute. Have a seat. Deshaun, can you do this for me? Just hold that, just reach it in, right in the middle of that circle right there. This is an atom. Everything in the universe is comprised of one of two things, either matter or energy. 
Matter are the tangible things that have weight, have mass, have shape, that kind of thing. And energy, which we'll get to in a, in a future message. This is the atom. This is called the nucleus. It has two parts in it. This is the electron, the electron field here. What I want, and, and, and everything that, everything has an atom in it. Say God is spirit. God is spirit. What I want you to see is the ratio between the nucleus and the electron. This is actually not an accurate depiction, depiction of the ratio of the, uh, the nucleus to the electron. Now I need y'all. What I need you to do, Josh, is go to that door back there that's open and wait there because I got some more information when you get there. And Tony, I want you to go to this door right here. Any of them doors, really. The nucleus, as compared to the size of this electron, if you look at it linearly, this is, this is actually 100,000 times larger than that. So they both have two black blue golf balls to show that they're still extending uh, this electron. Now, in order, uh, in order to get to where this part of the atom would stop as compared to that, you got to walk um, downtown and don't stop until you get to the capital of Michigan steps. <laughs> Tony, you have to walk to Waverly High School and just sit out in front of that sign out there on, 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 on snow in Michigan if you want to get to the end of how much bigger this is than this is. I'm thinking y'all not coming up, y'all not up to that. You're not quite 60, but I'm going to, please, go ahead and back and have your seat. <clears throat> this is vastly bigger than this. But interesting, this is the only part that governs feeling. <clears throat> when I touch my brother here, my nucleus is colliding with his nucleus. God designed us that way so we could experience the earth. So this part that governs feeling is central to the equation, but it's vastly smaller than the part that you cannot feel. As a matter of fact, let's go one further here. If you look not just at the radius, but at the whole, the, the, the volume of this thing, we can't do it in distance anymore because it's absurd. You can't think that far away, so we have to do it in time. This would be worth one second, and this would be worth 30 million years. Y'all, go ahead and have your seat. You can take that hula hoop, what you do. <laughs> What's my point? The smallest part of the atom, which is God is clearly trying to reveal himself, according to Romans 1.20, with the core of e e creation, the atom. The part in the center that is small is the part that governs feeling. But the vast majority of that equation, you cannot see, you cannot touch, but it is real nevertheless. <laughs> What's my point? Why live life right here when you can have all? Oh, I want to be all. Oh, You can have all of this. Don't let your situation boil you down to this. Don't let your pain boil you down to this. Yeah, you can feel it, but there's something far bigger than what you feel just on the outside of this perimeter. Don't let your failure tell you that this is where you got to live. You better leap out into God and spirit and find out what else he's got for you. We got to move. We got to move. We got to move. Give me 2 Kings 6, 16 through 20. Say, God is spirit. God is spirit. Is, 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 is it coming clear? That, 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 that world outside of there is the world that God powers with himself. He's eternity personified, y'all. You're not just stepping out into some unseen nebulous. It's God. He's right there. He's just that big. (laughs) 
So he answered. Let me get the backdrop here. Uh, so this is uh, Elijah, Elisha, and uh, one of the kingdoms is coming against Israel. And uh, so what, 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 uh, the king of, of, the, of, the, of the Syrian army, they had a discussion in a private chamber. He said, this is how we're going to beat Israel. We want you to go down there and hide in them bushes by the river because that's the way they come. That's, that's what they be doing right there. So you can catch them in, in their habit, in their norm, in their, their routine. While he was saying that, miles away, God had Elisha's ear in that conversation <laughs> because God is spirit. <laughs> There, it don't matter what room you're in. It don't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter no, whether anybody even understands what's happening in your life. God is spirit. He's listening to that, and he's setting your victory up somewhere else. If you believe, if you believe in his vastness. So, so that happened, and then he chose a different strategy. Well, go over here by this valley now and hide over there by the cave, because that's, that's the only other way that they can go. When, uh, you know, because we blocked up that way. Went over there, no place for life. The Bible says it happened again and again and again to where the king of Syria said, which one of y'all is working for Israel? <laughs> and somebody among them that was intuitive, he said, That's that, ain't none of us serving Israel, uh, Sire. That's Elisha. God is, this is what the Bible says. God is talking to him about what you say in your bedroom. <laughs> I need you to know how connected we are to everything if we believe in an infinite God. There simply are no limits. So, so, so then what happened is um, um, the enemy, uh, so what the king says is, go get Elisha. So they went down there and surrounded his house, thousands of them. Elisha's servant comes out and sees them. He run back in the, co in the house and said, we are in trouble. The army that was against all of Israel is now against me and you. They're just out here at the crib, right in our yacht. They got the whole neighborhood on lock, and we're in the middle of that, that thing. Elisha said, there are more that are with us than are with them. I need you to remember that. You don't even know some of the people that are for you yet. <laughs> you ain't met some of them yet. You don't even know that there's people that know you that you don't know that they know you, that God is talking in their ear right now about you. Somebody's being shifted out of the way so you can step into the way. So don't get limited. Don't live life right here. Not when God is spirit. So here's the, here's the service standing here looking dumbfounded, like, what in the world does that mean? I can't see nothing but Syrians, and you say there's more. God. Elisha said, God, open his eyes. And he looked at something that up to that moment that he could not see, but existed anyhow. <laughs> And the Bible says there was an angelic armies around him sitting in chariots that were on fire. <laughs> so then Elisha said, he told God, God, um, blind the, their enemy's eyes. So here's what I want you to notice here. He told him to open the servant's eyes. And this is something we need to always, always, always remember. Because things are not the way they appear. <laughs> things are not the way they appear, y'all. Always remember, there's another reality. <laughs> just outside your view. And God may not ever open your eyes like he did that servant. Right. But notice, Elisha didn't say, God, send down an army. And God, let the chairs be on fire. And God, let them be more than the tears. And he didn't say that. 
God didn't change the situation. He just revealed it for what it really was. Things are not the way they appear. Things are not the way they feel. Things are not the way they seem. It's different, y'all. God's got another reality that he wants to show us here right quick. But here's the irony that you have to see, y'all. We serve an ironic God sometimes, y'all. What did he do to the servant's eyes? What did he do to the servant's eyes? What did he do to the enemy's eyes? God wants you to win something bad, y'all. It wasn't enough that they were surrounded by chairs of fire. God opened the enemy's eyes, opened his servant's eyes, and closed the enemy's eyes so that he could not see. The enemy can't see you. He, th he thinks he can. But there's more to you than he cannot see. That army knew that they were around there somewhere. Elisha is somewhere. The sermon is somewhere. And they're bold for some reason. But they can't see you. Bob, the God's got his hand over your enemy's eyes. And he can't see you. But you can see him. And watch what God the servant opened his eyes to victory, and then the enemy opened their eyes to defeat. Once they got led down into the center of Israel's army, Elisha was like, God, open their eyes. Now, they opened their eyes and, <laughs> All right, we're wrapping it up here, y'all. Last point. <laughs> give me Genesis 12. No, 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 no. Don't give me that. Give me Genesis 24, verses 12 through 15. I thirst. <laughs> there you go. So I got to give you back, back, back to up here. <laughs> so this is um, Abraham has sent his servant Eleazar to go find a wife from the country where he came from. <laughs> Eleazar said, what if I can't find her? He said, you know, the Lord will bless you on your path. But if you don't find it, just come home. You, you know, ain't no beef between us. So Eleazar went to the country where Abraham came to, <clears throat> and he got on his knees and prayed. Give me this prayer here. Twenty-four, twelve. Then he said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, <clears throat> please give me success this day. And show kindness to my master Abraham. That's intercession. Come on, keep on. Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the daughters of men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I'll give you camel's water too. Uh, uh, camel's too. I'm going to let, there be, let her be the one that you have. What's his next word? appointed for your ser servant Isaac. And by this, I will know that you've shown kindness to your master. I, I, need, I need some maidens here, some, some young ladies. Can you help me? London, can you help me? <laughs> come on, dear. Yeah, come on, dear. I don't know you, but I'm calling on you. Yes, please. Give me one more young maiden. Let's huddle up over here, y'all. Come over here. Come over here. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. I turn my mic off.
Uh, give me that prayer again, Lane. <clears throat> Go back to 12. I'm Eliezer, y'all. Go back to 12. 24, 12. Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well, and the daughters of men of the city are coming out to draw water. And Did you get to the well first? Let me ask you this. Did she get to the well after he prayed or before he prayed? She prayed. Thank you, ladies. <clears throat> what I need you to understand is that it was too late for Eleazar to pray that prayer. But God had already heard his too late prayer. <clears throat> Do you know how many things God had to orchestrate before he got on his knees for that person that he had appointed to show up that well? They had to get out of bed at the right time. They had to all go co-mingle and all that stuff. Somehow she had to get out there before everybody else did. All of these things all happened and God orchestrated and worked it out before the man got on his knees to pray because God anticipated his faith. God is spirit. And he can even hear your too late prayers ahead of time. See, God is spirit is also relative to time. I need four brothers. I need uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Pastor Paul, can you help me? Pastor Terry, can you help me? Um, Scott, can you help me? Um, Josh, can you help me? Um, so I want you all to face this way. Um, and Josh, I want you to be back here. So you all face that way. And, and back up just a few steps here. Don't do yeah, that. A little, couple more steps here. So, this is the past. This is the present. And this is the future. <laughs> just do something for me. Come stand like right here. What and who is this you see in front of you? Okay, come right here. What do you see right here in front of you? Come stand right here. What do you see? What do you see right here? Is that all you see right there? Just the future? Yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> That's how we live on our timeline. Josh, come join me for a minute. But since God is spirit, he's outside the bounds of time entirely. Now tell me who you see. He sees the past, present, and future, not just one at a time, but simultaneously. <laughs> he sees the past, present, and future at the same time. So what he had to do was look into the past where Abraham said, go find her a wife, come up here into the future, and say, girl, go and get out of bed and head down there right now, so that in the present, as Leazar would see his answer to his prayer. God got your past, present, and future all in his purview, and he can do what he wants. And when you pray, you're praying to a God like this right here <laughs> who has no limit. I, I got a radical, I got a radical, I got a, I got a radical thought here, y'all. This is a radical thought. I know God can touch my present. I know he's working in my future. But what if, this is not, I'm not telling you to believe this, I ain't telling you to repeat this, but what if God does not only just heal you from your past, but he heals you in your past? <laughs> I don't know, but I've heard testimonies of people say, the things that happened to me, what I've been through right now, I don't look like, and it's almost as if it never happened. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all have a seat. I don't know.
Give me Isaiah 46 and 9. We're turning the corner. We're wrapping up here. Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is none other. I am God, there is none like me. <laughs> Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Declaring that my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my handiworks. God is the only one that can remember tomorrow before it happens. <laughs> I, 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 need you to see, I need you to see a bigger God here, y'all. This is the God that you take with you when you go to your knees. This is the God that you go to work and face when there's other stuff that ain't quite clicking there. This is the God you take with you when you ask God to heal a relationship. There's nothing outside of his power. Why wouldn't you trust this God? Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you that um, there's no question whether or not you're present. You're present. You're present everywhere. But God, we yearn. We yearn to know you. We yearn to know you in, in, in ways that we don't yet. We haven't discovered you. That's why we're getting on this journey of discovery. And we know you're waiting at every step to keep unfolding your goodness and unfolding your love and unfolding your help, God. So Holy Spirit, hover over this word in our hearts. Bring it back and bring it back and bring it back. When fear would try to lift us and keep us and limit us and shrink us to a small world, God, show us the way into God is spirit. I know I've told y'all to tap into God is spirit, other. But you want to know how to tap into God is spirit? Come back next Sunday, I'll tell you. <laughs> Got to stay on this journey. You don't want to miss one step. You don't want to miss one beat in this, on this drum right here, y'all. Come Tuesday, too. Some of you can't sign in, go back and listen to all that. Okay. So I want to pray for some people today. Uh... If you don't know Jesus, you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You can't remember a time when you prayed to him and asked him to come in your heart. If that's you with everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed, will you raise your hand, please? And I'll put right along with it, those who have accepted Christ, but you've strayed away in some way or another. Just raise your hand right there where you are. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that there are more in the room that if you were honest, you would say that. I'm not going to ask you to do anything outrageous. I do want to pray with you because the anointing and the power of God is here. And whatever has kept you from accepting Christ or caused you to, to, to stray from Christ, the power of God is here right now today to remedy that in your life. So if you're somebody that just raised your hand on either of those accounts, why don't you come up here to the altar? And even the ones that didn't raise your hand, that you know that yes, your condition, come on up to the altar. And everybody, let's give God praise for those and the boldness that's coming upon them right now. Thank you for coming. I saw him. You're going to be all right. 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 Come on up here. Yep. No weapon formed against me yeah, shall prosper. If you got a situation that you've been trying to pierce your way through but don't have the answer to it yet, I want to pray for you too. Because God is spirit is loosed in this room and there's faith in the room. There's power in the room that God wants to fix that thing today. No weapon against me shall prosper. It won't work. There's no weapon against me shall Oh, it won't say, God, God will do what He said. Do we stand by His word? He will come through. Yeah, God will do what He said. He will do. He stand by His word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So just to make sure that everybody's on the same page here, I want everybody in the room to pray this prayer. Say, Father, I thank you for the sacrifice of your son. Jesus died for me. Jesus was buried for me. And Jesus rose for me. And I thank you right now that because I believe it, I am a child of God. Forgive me at all, Lord, for going astray. Your son or daughter, whichever you are, is back home. Yes, <sighs> Come on, man. Thank you, baby. Father, I thank you for your son and daughter right now. I'm praying, God. We pray that you give them clarity and direction from you by your spirit.
the family's growing today. Um, did somebody get your information yet? Is, is anybody from the, the team here? <laughs> is there anybody else who wants to be a part of Tabernacle of David Church today? If God is leading you, if this feels like home to you, then this is where we want you. If it doesn't feel like home, keep visiting, keep trying, keep going. But if this is home for you, welcome home. Come on home today. Yeah, yeah. Get home mercy, no If you're home, come forward. If this feels like home, just, just step this way. It's my barber right there, y'all. Who we got here? So we have Sister Marcy Roberts, mm -hmm. Brother Dwayne Williams, Dewan. Dewan Williams Sr. and Jr. Brother Michael Terry. So. Welcome, 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 and welcome to the home of Tabernacle of David. We believe that your choosing to come here is a divine appointment, which means we've actually been praying for you before you came to this moment. We've been praying for people like you, people gifted like you, people with your story and your journey. We constantly praying, God, send the people that you want to be a part of this particular. And so we've been praying for you. Know this, expect in your life from this day forward for things to have more power behind them than they did before because now we're praying for you from this place here as members of this body. So think, some things are going to get easier. The difficult things you're going to be able to work through because you're not by yourself in this journey. You also have things that God has put in your hands that you're gifted at, that you can do and be, that we want to know what that is. And we want God to show you how to be a part of this so we can keep reaching out into the world and finding people and bringing them into this life, into this love, into this house. Thank you all for being a part of Tabernacle of David Church and welcome home. Stand, let's go, y'all. Y'all yeah. can stand up. Yeah, whoa. Oh, no, no. Okay, so uh, a couple of things. Um, yeah, so uh, don't forget about family prayer. Wednesdays um, from 6 to 7. It was, it was powerful, y'all. It was really powerful. We're laying hands on people at the end of that. You'll be blessed. Come bring your family. If you can't, sign on. But it'd be lovely to have you in the house. Um, and also consider to become, uh, you feel the atmosphere in here? There's been a troop of people praying for months to get it like this. If you're interested in being part of the prayer teams or intercession teams, talk to my wife. She's championing that cause here at Tabernacle of David. This final announcement we have to make is, this is a, it's a heart matter, it's a family matter. <clears throat> Katrina um, Hoskins, uh, who sings here on a praise team, her son, Octavian, uh, this past weekend lost his life. Um, he lives in Texas. And so we spent some time with the family yesterday and they're understandably um, hurt and devastated. So we really have to pray for them during this season, okay? So pray for Katrina. Obviously, you know her grandmother, um, Adrian Hoskins, and Javita, the whole family. They're, they're a core, a pillar family in this house. So keep them up in prayer. 
call, reach out in love. They may not be able to answer your call right now, but call anyway, leave a message, hit her on Facebook. She might not read it right now, but three months from now, when the grief hits, sometimes those are the things. Those words that you speak are eternal. They're infinite because you are. And so you speak the word that God has put inside of your heart and let God store it up for another time when they're going to need that help. Thank you all for coming today, and God bless you, Father. Thank you for your spirit in this room and in this house. Continue your work in this, Father, and as we step out of these doors, we're continuing.